Welcome to The Dig on the Huskers Radio Network podcast. Featuring Nebraska Volleyball Assistant Coach Jalen Reyes. Here's your host, Jessica Cootie. We're back with episode number three of The Dig. And up today in the hot seat is Jalen Reyes, first time on the podcast. We're rotating through all the assistant coaches, so we're glad to have you on here. And um, look forward to a great conversation today. Thanks for having me. All right, well, we, we have to start. 92,003 people break the world record. Man, how special was that night? It was unreal. Still can't fully grasp it, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, everyone asked me, like, did, you, did, did this meet your expectations of what you thought it was going to be? And if I'm being honest... I knew the fans would sh like show out and I knew we would break records. Um, but I don't think any of us could have expected how it went. I mean, it was just one of those things where I don't know. I mean, I'd love to do another one of these, but <laughs> I can firmly say, I don't know if I'd ever coach in one of these environments ever again in mm -hmm. terms of like, I mean, some of the pictures and just being up there on the stage in front of everybody. And just most of the time when I, when we coach volleyball, I have this tendency to kind of like everything else kind of goes away. And then here at Nebraska, we get to coach in front of amazing crowds all the time, whether they're on the road, they're at Devaney, um, they're up in Omaha. But Wednesday night was, I mean, you know, I, I'm just, I'm honestly just humble and happy I got to be a part of it because I don't think, I mean, I don't think that's going to ever happen again. You know, I'd love to be wrong, Trev, but <laughs> um, I just, you know, I, it was one of those things where, you know, it was one of those, you're part of a world record and just how cool it is for our girls and um, for the state of Nebraska to, and the, the university to really show, like, where the home of college volleyball is. Um, I just think it's really, really awesome and can't really put it into words yet. What was the tunnel walk like? I mean, I've been on the, I've been on the field because when we have recruits for the football, football games, we are usually on the field when the boys are coming out. And I remember my first tunnel walk watching, and I'm like, damn, this is, this is pretty awesome. Um, we saw the video the night before, but it doesn't, the one thing you don't have is you don't have the crowd and, mm -hmm. you know, the coordination of everyone knows when to clap and everyone knows what to say. And I don't know, the, when the, the video screen turned and it was coach and then it was the two captains, Mer Merritt and Lexi, I, even I was like, damn, that was pretty cool. And watching them walk out, it was, it was kind of funny because some of them were so awkward on camera because <laughs> they knew they were on camera. And, but they were also like so excited, you know, and uh, the gates open. And I remember kind of standing on the court because we we're getting re ready to warm up, me and the other assistants. And um, yeah, I mean, that was part of it, right? I mean, I think for me, the tunnel walk, the tunnel walk, I think was the coolest part of the night, in my opinion, was just because it was such a, it's such an iconic thing yeah. here at Nebraska. Um, and the fact that, again, this, you know, our girls got to do it, you know, and now those girls, when they come back and they go to a football game, they'll be able to say, like, we did one of those. And um, I may be biased, but I think it's the coolest one out of all the <laughs> probably hundreds of times Nebraska have done a tunnel walk. The volleyball players got, I think, got to do the most special one, which well, is really cool. I mean, there's a lot to, I guess, battle through all that. I mean, the emotions, the crowd, the outdoor. So overall, how did you guys feel like the team handled everything? Because you still had to go play a match. Yeah, I, and I think they, win a match. they did it. Unbelievable job of just separating. Even coaches like this is going to be emotional. Like even before the game, during the game. Um, but I thought when it was time to play volleyball, they played volleyball and. If I'm, if I'm being honest, the wind was a factor. In the first set, we were only setting. It was tough to set the ball um, just because the wind was coming from the southwest. It was tough to set the ball to the west side of the stadium. So in the first set, we set a lot of balls to our outside hitters. We even sent our middles to not go on that slide behind the setter. We just kept them in front the whole time just because the wind was, you don't, in volleyball and beach volleyball especially, you don't want to, it's hard to set the ball into, in the direction of the wind because the wind can really affect it. Mm -hmm. So we just set away from the wind and then hit it back toward the wind without getting into the nuts and bolts of it. I think the fact that all of our players played beach in the spring helped a ton because when we talked about this stuff, they, they weren't totally lost. Um, and Berg and Riley, I think, did a, like an unbelievable job of setting that. Not, not a lot of people... Um, I think have a feel of how hard it is to 
how hard it was to set that ball where a lot of setting is literally getting underneath the ball, but the ball gets past good and it could move two feet forward. And that, you know, that's, that's a huge difference between being able to locate a ball with tempo versus just setting it, you know, to where I'm standing all the way on the sidelines. And um, I guess a side note, one of my, uh, one of my best buddies growing up, um, his name's Micah Christensen. We played, uh, we played club volleyball, high school volleyball together. Um, he's the setter for the men's national team, two-time Olympian. And he, he was part of that USA volleyball crew that was there that night. And that was the first text he sent me was the environment was unbelievable. And man, kudos to your setter. Cause, mm -hmm. and him being a, a high level setter understood kind of like how yeah. hard that was watching that ball move on the pass, you know, from the TV broadcast, you can really even see how much that ball is moving around. And the fact that Bergen was kind of able to put up a ton of hittable, hittable balls for us was kind of a kudos to her. But, you know, I, to, not, to not say that the wind wasn't a factor, it definitely was a factor in the game. And which team handled that better? I think we came out to an advantage. I think we had an advantage just because we, we play outside a little bit in the spring. Um, but just in terms of, like, our girls being able to kind of table the environment that's around them. Because you can even understand, like, if someone didn't play well because of what was going on, yeah, I could exactly. honestly even yeah. say, like, as a human, like, as a coach, no, it's about volleyball. But that night was unlike any other, in my opinion. Um, so it would have been really easy for our girls to, oh, we didn't play as well because of the environment, because we were outside. None of that stuff was an excuse. And just them able to, when it was time to play volleyball, we had to handle our business and played volleyball. I think they did an unbelievable, honestly, a better job than I expected them to. Kelly was also saying, too, not only just the win, but the, the depth perception of not having a ceiling and the lights and everything and the crowd not being is also, was also something that Bergen was going to have to battle, too. Which... Oh, yeah. I mean, that ball gets passed around. You go from kind of a dusk blue sky to black, you know, dark sky, and then you have the lights depending on where the ball's from, and then you switch sides. The wind's coming from a different direction. The lights up on the stadium that you don't necessarily even see it in a football game because football players are usually kind of just looking this way, not really side to side, um, you know, maybe besides a quarterback. Um, but that and then the ability for passers to go from one side where we're passing on the, we're on the north side, there's so much room from South Stadium because the court was more on the north side. And then we switch sides and suddenly now we have a closer backdrop of, you know, and all that stuff. Again, maybe, we're, you know, I'm kind of pumping it up to, but like, in volleyball, that stuff kind of matters, especially oh, yeah. because we don't, no one ever plays in gyms <laughs> this big. There's yeah. like no gyms this big, hence why we had to play it in the stadium. You know, if there was a gym that big, we would have played inside probably. But just the ability for the girls to really adjust and, yeah, I, I mean, Lexi Rodriguez had an unbelievable game um, and she passed really well. I kind of joke around with her that, you know, she's so good that. She probably looked at it as like, oh, this is kind of fun. Like the ball can actually move a little bit more, almost making it harder for her because typically passing, she's pretty good and almost makes it look easy. And then just the ability of Bergen Riley to get under the ball and kind of still run a pretty good offense in, you know, conditions that aren't ideal for out for indoor outdoor volleyball. And then opening up first one on the road at Kansas State on Sunday. Overall, how did you feel like? The team handled the, the first kind of hostile environment yeah. that they were in. Yeah, it, uh, it was different. I think, one, that's a great environment. Mm -hmm. I think Kansas State and one of my buddies, Jay Mansfield, is the coach down there, and he's going to do a great job. And I think the environment they had yesterday was unreal in terms of um, the student section showed out. And, I mean, it was loud and it was hopping. They do a nice job with the game production, the lights, the sound. I mean, some of it was, like, deafening. Like, I had to, like, scream. And I'm only, like, six feet away. And... Becca and Andy can barely hear me sometimes. Um, but I thought it was great as a team. And then obviously rolling out the freshman. I thought the freshman had played really well. Andy Jackson had a really nice match. Bergen Riley does what she normally does. Laney Choboy, I think, had... Um, she made some plays early in that game um, that really, I think, got us into rhythm. That really... How should I say this? That maybe killed some of the nerves if that makes sense, mm -hmm. just because it's like, oh, Laney's flying around like normal. This is just a normal volleyball game. Even from point one, she made an unreal dig on the first point of the game, and then she got a dig later in that same rally, and then we ended up killing a ball. And it kind of, I'm not going to say settled us down because it was the first point of the game, but I don't know. It's just when you see somebody making those plays and not looking at balls that who normally runs around, and you could, again, her first college match, 
uh, on the road. Um, it was just like, it was kind of like nerve, nerve easing a little bit in terms of being able to, okay, hey, we're going to be fine. And I thought Harper, Harper, I thought Harper played pretty well. Um, not her best match, but I thought she kind of got herself going as the match went along. But I thought the, the four freshmen that played a ton, you know, I thought they did really well. And sometimes that's kind of how you gauge your team, right, is um, I think everyone can see we're going to lean on some freshmen. So how those guys develop. And, yeah, I thought they handled their first road trip pretty well. You and I were talking before we started recording. Uh, one of the questions that Lauren Cook West asked uh, Coach Cook last night in the in the post game interview was about Lexi Rodriguez and maybe looked a little off last night. But you were saying that a lot of it is that what you're asking Lexi to do is maybe a little bit more than what she has in the past. Yeah. Um, first, I think Kansas State served the ball really well. Um, served it really, really tough, especially early in the match. I thought they did a really good job of moving their serves around too um but yeah I, i'm the biggest advocate that i think lexi's the best libero in the country i've told her that um i think she's been the best libero since she's probably stepped into college volleyball probably going to take some heat for saying that but that's okay um we're asking her my biggest critique of her is Nebraska volleyball is better off over a long period of time, Lexi, when you take more first contacts, whether it's digging on defense or in serve receive. So we're asking her to expand her range in terms of, quote unquote, maybe this ball, this serve is this person's ball. But if you can get there, you have the veto card of, no, that can be your ball. So we're asking her to spread, I guess, get outside her comfort zone a little bit. And not that she doesn't take that many balls already, we're asking her to do more, take more. And sometimes that leaves you up for, you know, if you take more balls, there's more chances of you not passing as well. But even when Lexi doesn't pass as well, it frees up Harper to go and hit. It frees up Lindsay to go and hit. It frees up Merritt to go and hit. Ali, whoever's in there. Um, and over a long period of time, we're better when Lexi passes the ball versus, and that's why we try to rearrange our serve receive to where she spends a lot of time in the middle. Because when she's in the middle, she can help both players. Versus when she's only in right back, when they serve it over to left back, she can't realistically get all the way over there. So we try to rearrange our serve receive to one, allow her to, okay, hey, they're lining this person up, slide in the seam. And if you have, if you want to move them, get them out of your way. You know, and that's my biggest thing with Lexi is making sure she can take more balls and people aren't taking balls from her. So when you do that, again, it's use the basketball analogy. When you ask somebody to shoot, four threes and they make two of them, they shoot 50%. When, that, when they're shooting 50% from the three-point line, you're going to ask them to shoot more. But when you ask them to shoot more, they're going to miss more. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's one thing we're asking Lexi, and we're okay with it to a degree. Um, and then you know, as some of the freshmen you know, get better and get used to it, maybe they can take a little more, and that makes Lexi more efficient. But you know, we're asking Lindsay and Harper, especially Harper Murray, to serve, play defense, pass, uh, block, and hit. Maybe not their priorities, maybe aren't in that order. I just listed them. But, you know, we're asking a freshman to do a lot over a long season, and people are going to serve her volleyballs. You know, we're asking Lexi, like, hey, you're more capable right now. Harper's a great passer, and she's going to be a really good passer over time. But one thing I know is Lexi Rodriguez, and I think the whole country knows, Lexi Rodriguez is a great passer. Yeah. You know, she didn't maybe have her best game yesterday. But, again, we're asking her to do a lot. Um, and even if she didn't have her best game yesterday, we're still going to ask her to do a lot. And we're not going to rein that kid in because, again, at the end of the day, we're better off when Lexi Rodriguez takes a lot of first contacts. You know? So I'm going to live with that kid whether she misses or not because I believe in her. How do you coach a player that's so good like that? <laughs> Sometimes, honestly, it's get out of her way. <laughs> I think it's Love it. I try not to be the, with her. Yeah, there's some kids on the team I coach a lot, and there's some teams that there's some kids on the team that I just kind of, hey, just give them a little bit of maintenance, make sure they're in the right spots, and just let them do what they do. And Lexi's definitely one of those kids that, especially in serve, receive, and defense, just, just knows where to be. You know, sometimes maybe she's out of position or maybe I can kind of nudge her away or two. Okay, but like with her, it's just ma maintaining what she knows, getting her a ton of reps, and then just maybe talking, hey, X's and O's, like maybe you can position yourself here against this player or vice versa. Um, but if, you know, if I'm being honest, comparing her to a kid like Andy Jackson or Becca Alec or Maggie Mendelson, I do more of more training with them during practice um, 
just because, hey, they're at that stage where they need it versus Lex in her role. She's already elite. Um, just kind of fine tuning some stuff with her is really important. Looking at some stuff on video and again, a lot of the coaching is Lexi, take more balls. You know, mm -hmm. encouraging her to do that to where we're going to live with the ball that maybe you don't pass as perfect because you passed it. And the more balls you pass, not perfect because you're taking more, you're also going to pass way more balls perfect because you're taking more. So living with the minuses because the pluses are going to outweigh the minuses again over a long period of time. Absolutely. If you've got like a parent or a young libero that's listening in, I mean, how do you get to the point that Lexi is at where she is that good? I mean, what goes into that if you're training as a young athlete? Oh, um, for that position, reps are huge. Um, it's such a feel. It's such a, you have to know what you're seeing. So someone has to maybe coach you on what to look for. But it's also just being put in that situation so many times to where Lexi's body just knows like where, like what to do. And her platform knows how to move and her eyes know what to look at and her feet. You know, I was kind of saying off air, I don't even know if she knows how to verbalize all of it because she's so, it just comes so naturally to her over a, lo a long, a, over a long time of playing a lot of reps. Um, and she's played for honestly some unbelievable coaches um, when it comes to training, de passing and defense. I think Coach Cook is the best college volleyball coach in terms of coaching defense, serving and passing. Um, and she's come from a club, a club program that has a history of producing a lot of those kids. But I think reps are huge. Um, because it, it's such a feel being able to see the ball off the server's hand, getting your platform out and the touch of when the ball hits your platform and how your body needs to be, um, without getting into the, all the X's and O's on, on air, it's such a rep thing. Mm -hmm. And the more, especially with serve receive, the less talking us coaches can do and just the more putting the girls in those environments, um, they learn way more from doing it than me talking to them about it because it's such a... It's such a feel thing, and to a degree, it's simple. If like you watch Lexi, it's so simple because she has obviously this level of expertise doing it, but she also just has like, I know, I, how'd you know to do that? Well, I just know because like she's been put in that situation so many yeah. times and her body recognizes like, okay, that ball's floating this way. I need to do this, you know, but she's able to make those decisions in that split second that, again, makes it why she makes it look so easy when... There's not that many people, honestly, on the planet that could do what she does. Wow. Well, you had talked about the freshman, and Andy Jackson had a great match yesterday, and uh, what, 10 kills, hit a, uh, 750, and she's hitting almost 600 going into this Creighton match. What have you guys seen from Andy and, and what she's been able to do for you there at middle blocker? Yeah, I mean, there's, first of all, there's not, the level of athlete she is, is, I, I didn't, we're not teaching that, you uh -huh. know, it's one of those things where she's just so gifted athletically. Um, the key for her, it's almost the opposite of Lexi. Lexi has all these volleyball reps. She just knows what to do on the court. For us, getting Andy into those situations where understanding, okay, hey, the pass is here. This is the attack you should run, okay? The pass is nice and high. We need to go slow to fast. We need to see the pass first and then be able to timing, getting her timing when it comes to blocking and attacking, being able to see the pass and again, knowing what to look for, those are those volleyball IQ things that she's quickly picking up on that we're really having to work for. I'm not teaching her to jump higher. Part of, part of it is though, is like getting her to harness that momentum to jump high every time is the key. And but being able to do it with, like anyone can go touch a vertex really high, but in volleyball to go touch that ball you have to have the timing to it versus a vertex is just, it's up there the whole time. You can, whether I touch it five seconds later or 10 seconds later, I can still touch it as high as I can. Versus in volleyball, it's, you need to meet the ball at a certain time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is timing. Blocking is, can I see the set and get my hands? But it, timing is huge because I can make the same block move, but if they set it super high, I'm going to be on my way down and I'm probably not going to block the ball. So a lot of that is seeing what's going on the volleyball side of things. And then if the time, getting that timing lined up, because once the timing line is lined up, you'll see an athlete, there's very few, few of those in the country. But again, getting that timing, hitting a quick set or hitting a slide versus a pass that maybe is perfect, but if Lexi passes it fast, 
versus Lexi passes it super high, those two things can affect Andy's approach. Mm -hmm. But if she does the timing right, at the end, it's going to look the same. But if she goes a little early on that high pass or goes a little late on that fast pass, timing's not going to look, and she's not going to look like the thoroughbred athlete she is. So a lot of it is that, and then a lot of it is just we're working on some range things where teams are going to start to figure out where she likes to hit the ball, um, or good teams are, which Creighton's a good team. So they're going to, I bet they're going to come out looking to take away some of the specific things she likes to do. So now it's can she open up her hitting toolbox, her repertoire of where she's comfortable hitting, you know, not just this way, but this way as well. So just working on a lot of volleyball skill stuff with her. It's funny, my dad and brother went to the, the match here inside Memorial Stadium. It was my brother's first time watching Nebraska volleyball live. Not a person. bad, uh, not a bad first game. Right, and I and being part of the world record, yeah. So, but he was their basketball. My dad's a basketball coach, and my brother was saying I was watching the layup line, right, and that Andy Jackson immediately stood out to him, just like just the raw athleticism that you're talking about when you guys are just you know going through your warm up drills. He was like number 15. Wow. So it's it's pretty evident, I guess, her raw athleticism that you can it it just jumps off the charts. Right. It's. Uh, in volleyball, it's, it's so crucial, like, how people move, right? Just watching even the way they walk, even the way they run, the way they jump. Swinging your arm is important, too, obviously, in volleyball, especially for an attacker. Like, the first time I saw Andy play in club, this was before COVID. Um, it was at a club tournament in Denver, actually. And just, like, in awe of that girl moves like an international volleyball player. She was 14, was the knowledge there at the time? Maybe not, but just the way people move, you know, for me is a big thing because it's like, those are, you think about it, by the time she was already 15, so she's already spent 10, 12 plus years learning how to move the way she moves. So like trying to uncoach that is, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but it's harder. It's nicer when they come in where it's like, man, this kid moves like this volleyball player, you know, and this kid swings their arm and they jump. It's not necessarily how high they jump. It's just how efficient Andy Jackson is as an athlete in terms of harnessing, okay, building momentum, going slow to fast. Obviously it helps that she's long and she has long levers. Don't get me wrong, but just how she naturally does that. And there's a lot of girls on our team that do it too. I'm just, we're talking about Andy, um, but how she naturally just kind of does that that it allows her over a long period of time to harness her full capability as an athlete. Because mm -hmm. there's some kids that can do it once in a while, but just they don't move efficiently all the time, especially when they first get here, to do it a lot, you know? We're trying to get them to do it a lot of the times, and maybe even every time, you know? So Andy has that ability of like understanding. Now it's just, can we line up the timing of stuff and getting her to open her hips a little more when, he, when she needs to do this, or, hey, maybe taking better shuffle steps so where she can really jump to something is, is, uh, is kind of those fine-tuning things that are honestly hard, but also so fun to coach because uh -huh. it's like, you know, you know, I think at Nebraska, um, we get great athletes all the time, you know, but there's some special ones that come around that you're just like, wow, you know, I get to work with a kid like this. And honestly, we have a bunch of them on this team. So it's, it's really, really fun. Now it's just kind of sinking the volleyball side of things with their raw athleticism, I think, is the key. Well, you guys got a couple big ones coming up, starting with Creighton and top 25 matchup. Get to have them home here inside Devaney. What have you guys seen out of them? Have you started uh, diving into prep for Creighton yet? Yeah. Uh, a lot of returners from last year. Um, I haven't watched a ton of them. I'm going to go do that actually this afternoon. But Nora Sis is one of the best outsides in the country, um, flat out. She's going to get a ton of sets. I mean, she's, she had like, I think she probably had almost 200 swings over the weekend um, if you combine their three matches. Ava Martin has been lighting it up. Um, big fan of their, cent, of their setter weight. She's a gifted setter, but just a really, honestly, fun volleyball player to watch. And I think people that are going to watch the game this week uh, on Wednesday or come to the Vanny Center, um, you'll get to see, like, how fun of a team they are to watch play because they play with kind of a fun style. They set the ball fast. They have people that fly around. They're going to sit some balls at the back row that, you know, and Norris is going to get a lot of swings. And if you don't already know her name, you're going to know her name probably after Wednesday. Hopefully we can kind of handle her a little bit. <laughs> um, but, yeah, just in the pride of, hey, it's such a great volleyball state. Obviously, last Wednesday, I think 
if people didn't know that it was a great volleyball state after last Wednesday, now they do. I think even non-volleyball fans now know. Um, but one of our goals um, that we came up with is we want to be state champions, you know? So we already played one of the teams in our state. And now we kind of have the state championship game on Wednesday. So we're kind of looking at it. That's a big goal for us, kind of like a football, football rivalry game, you know? And um, it's a really good team. And it's, again, it's a really good test for our young, you know, our young squad, especially some of the players on our team that are, you know, this is kind of the first, this is going to be their first Creighton match. And, uh, um, you know, and again, Creighton had some nice wins already and they're a really good team and they're coming in playing some really good volleyball. You mentioned their setter. They're fourth in the nation in assists per set and uh, team assists. How do you disrupt that? I mean, how do you get them where they don't pass the ball as well? Yeah, I guess. serving so. is important. You know, that's one thing we need to really work on. Um, if Coach Cook was here. He'll tell you serving is super important, and it is. And we don't feel like we're at the capability that we are serving the ball. So we're going to have to serve the ball really well to beat these guys. Um, and then can we disrupt the things that they like to do, you know, uh, with block and defense and um, – you know, having the littles in the back just kind of run down balls that, that get past the block. And, but I think a lot of it is our serve, and then our serve can position ourselves, helps us position ourselves better to where we can use that length we've been talking about in terms of getting in front of them, getting in front of them especially in areas where the attackers that are high volume for them like to hit the ball. Um, you know, and if we don't do that, we're going to have a hard time. So we need to do that, and then obviously we need to, when they, when they give us the ball, we need to make them pay for it. So we need to be able to transition and kill the ball. Um, that's kind of what we broke the game open yesterday was we got those balls in the you know, second and third set. We were able to kill it the first time and not get into these long rallies. You know, Honestly, my men's volleyball background, I know this might be a hot take, but I'm more of a fan of dig it, set it, and kill it. And these long <laughs> rallies for me, I'm getting too old to <laughs> deal with these long <laughs> rallies. You know, I like when we're past set and kill the ball and you know, our, we serve it. If we don't serve an ace, we block it or we block touch it, we dig it, and then we set it and kill it. So for us, it's just can we terminate the ball when they give it to us? And that puts a ton of pressure on the other team. But it starts with serving. So I know you guys take it one game at a time, but um, for the sake of previewing the week, and we won't have another uh, podcast before this, but Long Beach State also coming up uh, this week, Saturday, 7 o'clock. Uh, probably aren't, haven't dived into um, film and stuff yet, but you're very familiar with the head coach, Tyler Hildebrand. So what do you guys know about Long Beach State right now? For sure. Tyler's my brother, by the way, so uh -huh. um, him and I are really tight. Um, we talk a lot. I don't know if we'll talk much this week. Uh, when he gets here Friday, we'll for sure hang out. But, um, I mean, they beat Texas. You know, mm -hmm. they're, beat, they're the only team this year that can say they beat the number one team in the country. Um, so they have a lot going for them. I know they took some L's over the weekend, but he's got a fun group. They set the ball fast. They're kind of playing a little more of an international style in terms of setting it fast. They throw it and jam it around. A lot of people think it's a lift. I personally don't think so. I kind of like volleyball that, that level, especially if you watch international volleyball. Um, she's probably going to kill me for saying this, but when, everyone, anyone, when anyone in the United States throws the ball, I, I blame that on Jordan Larson anyway, because she's <laughs> made a name for herself doing that anyway internationally. So um, when Husker fans complain about it, just know, hey, the, the, the gov is the one that started that <laughs> stuff. So we're all copying her. So... Um, but no, they just, it's fun. They have a bunch of good volleyball players with big arms. Um, and Tyler's, Tyler's got them believing over there. And, um, you know, it's not every day that a program like that can beat the defending national champions, number one, Texas. And, um, you know, you can't take that away from them. And, you know, if they can play with Texas, they can play with anybody, you know, and I, I think our girls know that. Um, especially because a lot of them maybe either have been recruited or pl have played for Tyler, especially, you know, the older kids on the team have all been around when Tyler was here in 21. And, um, yeah, just it's going to be a fun fun week of volleyball, obviously not overlooking Crane because that's a big one. And then, you know, on to Long Beach, um, you know, probably starting Thursday. You said it, Tyler was your brother, and you guys work closely together. When he takes a head job, what, what is it about him as a head coach that you knew that he was going to be successful taking over the reins of that? When he went home, right, he's a Long Beach State alum. So he's got a ton of pride for that program and that school. Um, so I knew just first of all, he, was, he, he, he wants that program to be great because that's, Long Beach is part of him, right? And uh, I think that number one, I think he's a really, really, really gifted people person in terms of getting young people to believe and play with a style. And whether you agree with that style or not, he gets them to play that style of volleyball he wants them to play. Um, 
He's a really good offensive coach, really good setting coach. So I knew they would do some stuff flashy offensively that, in my opinion, is very cutting edge compared to the rest of the country. So I think what makes them successful is you don't always get to play against a Long Beach State. You don't see a Long Beach State. Most, most teams, it's hard to replicate stuff, the stuff they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, the setters literally, instead of maybe always traditionally scoring up to the outside hitter, she's going to have her back to the net and set it some, a bunch of different directions. And it's hard to replicate if you don't see that every day because not a lot of coaches are coaching it. Um, and then just his connection um, to people and his connection to volleyball people, I knew he would be able to attract some pretty fun and experienced transfers like he has on his team. Um, I think most of his current roster in terms of the p people that we're going to see probably play Saturday night, they've transferred in from somewhere because Tyler can get kids to believe, you know, and, um, you know, he's gotten me to believe that I can be a good volleyball coach and side note that I could be an okay golfer, not a good golfer, <laughs> but an okay golfer. Um, you guys battle it out on the golf course? I don't know if it's battle it out. He's basically my swing coach. I, I have no <laughs> chance against him. If you gave me a stroke on a hole, I still think I would lose pretty pretty like nine out of 10 times, maybe. Um, but he's, he, he gets people to believe and, um, you know, just being able to do that, um, being able to attract more talent, you know, and experienced talent. So one, he's already working with the level of kids I think he's working with this year are even higher than last year, you know, and he, he got a bunch of really good players last year to come in and now he's got more and he's getting some really good freshmen to come in. So, um, I knew he was going to be successful for that reason. And, um, you know, to a degree, I'm learning this from John. Um, usually the successful coaches are the ones that don't, don't hear the answer no, you know. So, um, you know, Tyler's kind of learned that. I think Tyler's always been that way. So just pushing his administration, to, we need to be great in volleyball. This is a volleyball school, Long Beach State is. And um, their men's team is super successful, a really good beach program. And, um, Tyler feels like, hey, the women's program needs to be at that level. So, I mean, he's already kind of turned heads, and obviously he had probably the win of the year so far in terms of an unranked team beating the number one team in the country at the time. So, um, honestly, a lot of the stuff he's doing, none of it really surprises me. I'm a little biased, obviously. <laughs> Last thing I got for you, just, you know, going into this week as you head towards a, a tough stretch before you head into Big Ten play, What's the goals? What are the goals for this week? What are the things that the Huskers need to focus on this week? This week, I mean, we talked about being on state champions and being undefeated in Devaney. So we have two, two matches in Devaney. Um, we got to get better at serving. I think serving is really, really important to us. We're working, our, working on our offense. Um, I think those are the two biggest areas, um, you know, that as a group we need to work on. Um, I know it's kind of cliche coach talk, but we don't feel like maybe we're ser as a team serving at the capability that we could. So we're going to look at some stuff there. Um, and then just again, fine tuning offense and just finding ways to kill more volleyballs, whether it's in the middle, whether it's on the pin, maybe it's out of the back row a little bit. I think we can maybe use, utilize that a little more. Um, obviously we're going to try to fine tune everything, but I think those are two big keys serving. I think is going to help us a ton against Creighton and against Long Beach. Long Beach likes to set the ball fast. So if they're in system, they can be held to defend. So, um, getting teams off the net makes us a better block and defense team already. All right. Awesome stuff. Appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Uh, Jalen Reyes with Nebraska Volleyball. And we'll be back with another episode next week. I believe it's Kelly Hunter that will be back in the hot seat next week. And I should mention, if you have any questions that you want me to ask these assistant coaches each week, you can drop them in the comments, and we will pass those along to these guys each week. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of The Dig. Make sure you subscribe and like wherever you listen to never miss an episode.